This I first met on the Shenandoah River 28 years ago. We were having a float trip down the Shenandoah for my cousin's 25th wedding anniversary. And I'd never seen this plant before. And I got out on one of the pit stops along the river and found myself surrounded by this herb. I'd never smelled anything quite like that before. Strangely, it took me about two months to find somebody who knew it. And it might be known to you up north as Sweet Annie. It's a common herbal wreath material. It's an annual, means it comes back from seed every year. I had no use for it at that time, so I just learned it. But two years later, I was in Kunming, China. And a physician came up and held it up and said, do you know this plant? And I said, I had to smell it to be sure it's got a unique smell. I said, yes, that's Artemisia annua. He said, this is Ching Hao, and this is good for chloroquine resistant malaria. Well, I was collecting for the cancer program, so I let that pass. Uh, a year later, the guitar player with my bluegrass band called. He was working for Walter Reed. Dr. Les Allstadt, and he said, Duke, you know where we can find some sweet Annie? I said, Les, you remember pit stop number two out on the Shenandoah? That weed was sweet Annie. So we jumped in his car and drove out there and filled it up with this because Walter Reed had learned as a Chinese, already knew that this was useful for chloroquine resistant malaria. And that's why I brought it up. It contains artemisinin. It's been shown now as a result of Dr. Allstetz and some other researchers at Walter Reed. And it, the artemisinin is there, ascaridol and other antimalarial is there, four flavones that have been shown to be synergistic with those are there, and several other anti-parasitic compounds. So this whole herb contains at least 10 compounds that could contribute to its malarial activity. But when Gates elected the genetic engineers to genetically engineer artemisinin. They said, and I think erroneously, that this was hard to grow. This has been volunteering here for 28 years now, or 27, 26 years. So we had to pull up a thousand last week, where you see mulch now. It was solid, sweet Annie. And uh, after it goes to flower, a piece this big will have a thousand seed on it. It's an incredibly prolific plant. It is not difficult to grow here. I think it would grow quite well in California as well, although I think it prefers a temperate climate to a Mediterranean climate. So I'm trying to convince uh, Mr. Gates that we could probably extract this in the backyard for one ten thousandth the cost of his genetically engineered uh, artemisinin and we'd have all those other synergens along with it. Goes very well in a gin tonic I might add. Gin contains juniper which has antimalarial activity. Tonic contains quinine which has uh, is associated with several other antimalarial alkaloids and you float this in a gin tonic, it's very pretty, just like asparagus, beautiful. And you get all those interesting biological activities that go with it. So I'll just if you have, I mean, I've had people come in uh, already and ask for artemisinin. I mean, artemisinin? Yeah, artemisinin. I, I don't think it's available yet, is no. it? No. But and but only be, by prescription. And they'd be better off just using the whole plant then? Or would they get the same results? Well, that's my major focus in my senior years, or dare I say senile years, to get, to get clinical comparisons of the whole herb with the isolated synthetic. And until we clinically compare them, nobody can answer that question. And what better thing to do than to find out that the whole herb, which is cheaper, is equally efficacious and usually has fewer side effects.